All right, now let's, let's talk about our website platform. So we've set up our domain names, registered them, we've registered a hosting account, and we've now successfully connected our domain name to our hosting plan. And we know that all works. But as we've seen, we can't really do much with it at the moment. It's just some space on the web. All we can do with it so far is create simple text files, upload them with FileZilla, and then display them in our web browsers. And that's not really going to get us this the agency grade website that we want. So we need a website platform. So your website platform is kind of like an operating system. So like when you top, you have it with Windows to so get the laptop and install Windows on it. Or if you've got a will have the Mac OS on it. And then when you've got Windows, it it's an operating system, do much, yeah. To get it to do something funky, you Microsoft Office. So Office is installed on Windows and Windows is installed on the laptop. Okay. So this is like the hardware, that's the operating system, and that's the software that well the application that actually um, lets you create an unlimited number of spreadsheets, document pages, all that stuff. And the web's pretty similar. So we've got a web server with uh, which we've we're going to start kind of renting a portion of a web server from Liquid Web for fifteen dollars a month. And on that web server, they've installed cPanel for us. We were playing with cPanel earlier on when we were creating our email accounts, and we're going to be using that in a second. But as we've seen with cPanel, it doesn't really do much. It's just a platform in order to host files. And we wanted to do something more sophisticated than that, so we need some software. And the software we're going to be installing is WordPress. So WordPress is going to allow us to create an unlimited number of web pages and then manage all the bits of our website in an easy way. And we don't need any technical skill whatsoever. We just need to follow the steps and we'll be able to create web pages, put images on them, put text on them, uh, keep them all organized and it'll be good. So WordPress is, is open source software. So open source, that's how I remember it. I know it's a different spelling, but open source. So open source software means that whoever wrote it in the first place, it's obviously been wrote with computer code of some kind. And ordinarily, you wouldn't want to share that with anybody because it's your it's your property. Yeah, If you spent all that time writing the thing, you wouldn't want to give it away. But there are a growing community of people who believe that the web being as powerful it is, yeah, is, is kind of it should be open and freely available to use to everyone in the world, right? Because as a human race, we need to evolve and progress and so forth. So WordPress is open source, which means anybody can get the source code for it and tinker around with it. But the benefit of that is that people who are enthusiastic about programming can get the source code, find security holes in it, and then fix them, right? It also means they can develop add-ons and improvements, and you've got an army of enthusiasts who are quite happy to work for free in their spare time and in their day jobs to improve their software, right? So instead of just a few hundred programmers who work for a company working on it, you've got tens of thousands of people who are working for free and enthusiastically to improve the thing. So it, it moves on quite a lot quicker, and you've got all this support out there as well. So open source as opposed to closed source. So Windows is closed source. Closed source software is the stuff you generally pay for. So Microsoft employ a whole bunch of programmers on big salaries to build Windows and all the new versions that come out. And because they have all those salaries to pay, they keep the source code to themselves and then they obviously sell that um, software to people like Dell and all the people who make the computers and they sell it off the shelf as well. The biggest benefit of open source software is you've got all this support, and because it's freely available, the source code's freely available, um, the software is also free. The way the way people make money from open source software is by selling you their time. So say, for example, um, you didn't have Web Catalyst and you wanted a WordPress website setting up for you. Well, you could pay someone to do that and they could charge you for their time. They wouldn't be able to charge you for WordPress because it's free, but they would charge you for their time to download the software and install it and set up your hosting plan and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's that's valuable, but you wouldn't be paying for the software, you'd only be paying for their experience and their expertise. But even then, because you've got this, you don't need any of that, and um, we're going to teach you everything you need to know. So now let's go on to the practical bit where we'll actually install WordPress.